It is 8 p.m. Monday across Queensland, and we now have newly declared Category 1 Cyclone Oswald approaching the Cape York Peninsula, where cyclone warnings are now in effect. Wind gusts exceeding 90 kilometers per hour will be possible, especially near the center of circulation and the areas where it makes landfall. However, massive rainfall totals and the risk of flooding will be the primary concern with this tropical cyclone all throughout the Cape York Peninsula, but the flooding threat will not be limited toward the western coast. It's also going to be along the Queensland coast, along the Coral Sea. We've already seen rainfall totals nearing 200 millimeters within just the past 24 hours in some of these areas shaded in red to the north of Townsville. In addition to the rainfall totals, we are already seeing pictures and reports of significant flooding and the closure of roadways, especially across the Innisfail region, and we have uploaded some of those pictures sent to us through Facebook. You can check some of these out at facebook.com slash 28storms, where we are updating not only the news and information, but we are also alerting people when the videos, like the one that you are currently viewing, are uploaded to our website. The unfortunate news is that in addition to the rainfall we have already seen, the tropical low, now Cyclone Oswald, is going to linger around the region for at least the next 72 to 96 hours. And although there will still be periodic breaks in the rainfall activity, that will certainly not be the trend, especially across the northern, far northern portions of Queensland, as this tropical low will move more toward the north, but then become nearly stationary as the steering currents begin to break down, and then likely start to take more of a southerly movement within the next 72 to 120 hours. If we zoom in using the latest radar from Mornington Island, we can see the center of tropical cyclone Oswald now beginning to make landfall along the Cape York Peninsula just to the southwest of Kawanyama, and this is the localized region where those 90 kilometer wind gusts could occur. But as we've already stated, it's going to be the prolonged period of rainfall all across the region and the threat of heavy flooding that'll be the main story with Cyclone Oswald for the next week. As we switch over to the latest visible satellite animation, it is becoming increasingly apparent that it's good news that the center of circulation is now making landfall. Otherwise, the, the tropical cyclone was already starting to take on a very well-organized appearance on satellite imagery, and had it had more time over the open waters of the Gulf of Carpentaria, we could have seen more in the way of steady intensification into a more significant tropical cyclone. Nonetheless, as we switch over to the enhanced infrared, we see the strongest convection, thunderstorm, and rainfall activity associated with these cold cloud tops, especially to the north and northeast of the center of circulation, and Tropical Cyclone Oswald is doing a good job of funneling in all of the moisture associated with the monsoon trough and just simply dumping it all across the Cape York Peninsula on both sides here, so even west and east of the Great Dividing Range, including Cairns and Innisfail and all these areas in between, you could also expect some very heavy rainfall with the risk of flooding over the next few days. We can see Tropical Cyclone Oswald moving eastward at a fairly decent clip using the latest regional water vapor imagery. However, the fear over the next day or so is that the steering currents are going to break down. The upper level low over the Coral Sea is quickly moving off toward the east along with the mid to upper level trough associated with that upper level low. And this is going to leave Tropical Cyclone Oswald behind over the Cape York Peninsula as mid to upper level ridging begins to reemerge over Western Australia and the Northern Territory. With time, that ridge is going to begin to be the main focal point for steering as we go into 48 and 72 hours, and this could induce more of a track toward the south-southwest, which is only more problematic for the Cape York Peninsula as the center of circulation will be very slow to meander toward the south while remaining over land, at least for the most part. The following is the latest 0Z run from the ECMWF model, and this run has become available within the past 90 minutes. As we go into 24 hours, you can see the tropical cyclone moving more toward the north-northeast, but beginning to slow down as the ridging to the southwest begins to reemerge. And once the trough begins to lose its grip of the tropical cyclone from the Coral Sea, the storm is going to start moving back toward the south as we go into 72 hours. And based on the European depiction, as we go into day four, this ridge is going to slide underneath whatever is left of Cyclone Oswald, and this could even push the tropical cyclone back into the southeastern quadrant of the Gulf of Carpentaria. And this is right now the westernmost solution, so it is not the most likely track. However, the European model is fairly good in the extended range, so we will have to continue to monitor whatever is left of this low pressure center as we go into day four and day five in the event that it happens to move back over open water. 
either way, even if the tropical cyclone is a little bit more toward the south, you're still looking at over five days worth of heavy rainfall all across this region. Now, as just mentioned, the majority of the remaining models are showing a bit more of a southerly or more easterly track, and we will show you that beginning with the latest run from the GFS model. Over the next 24, 48, and even 72 hours, it is in fairly close agreement to what we just saw with the European. The only difference is that as we get into 72 hours, as the low begins to track more toward the south, it is still just east of the Gulf and still unloading quite a lot of rainfall across the Cape York Peninsula. And as we go into 96 hours, this is where more significant differences begin to show up. The GFS is showing a deeper trough passing over Victoria, New South Wales, and Tasmania. And the trough is now pulling the tropical cyclone, or whatever is left of the tropical low, more toward the southeast, thus guaranteeing that the system never reemerges back into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Instead, it eventually slides off into the Coral Sea as a significantly weakened tropical low. Based on that track, this is what the GFS is indicating in terms of rainfall totals over the next eight days. And the totals are off the chart across far northern Queensland. There is actually a maximum of 27.4 inches, which is exceeding 600 millimeters, believe it or not. And even all of these interior regions to the west of the Great Dividing Range are all in excess of 300 millimeters. And even off toward the Coral Sea coastline, the model has been underdoing the precipitation rates so far, at least during the early duration of this event. So although the model is only showing an excess of 100 millimeters over the next eight days, that is probably going to be very conservative once it's all said and done, as we have seen that almost within the last 24 hours already. Now, there is one third and potentially less likely scenario that we are still going to have to watch for over the next day, and that is the scenario being outlined by the latest run of the Canadian CMC model. Instead of sitting directly over the Cape York Peninsula, it continues to carry the tropical low, or Cyclone Oswald, eastward, reemerging over the Coral Sea and then moving due south from Cairns down toward Townsville as still probably at least a Category 1 cyclone, but once again, it is unlikely that the storm will be able to move this far east. Instead, it's rather likely that it's going to stall out before reaching the Coral Sea. As a matter of fact, the European Ensemble mean run just came out within the last 30 minutes, and upon closer inspection, the European Ensembles are actually even more west than the operational run of the European. So this gives the Gulf scenario a bit more credibility here, and that is going to be something that we are definitely going to have to watch for, because as we go into 96 hours, this would imply a threat to the southern coastline, and this would definitely be a tropical cyclone in all likelihood. Despite its stay over the Cape York Peninsula over the next 48 to 72 hours, this type of track would suggest that there would be enough time for more strengthening over the open gulf. So that sums up your tropical cyclone update for this hour. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash 28storms. For all of the latest social media updates, you can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And finally, you can find all of this information, of course, at 28storms.com.